Hi, it's Crafty Lady Abby, and today I'm going to share with you a bunch of things that I've purchased at various thrift stores over the last few months. The reason why I'm sharing this with you is I often take old items and upcycle them into something more colorful usually, or something that we need for the house. Uh, a lot of times I'll paint them, and sometimes I'll dye them, which is things that I've been working on recently. Um, the first store that I have to show you is Goodwill, which most people have a Goodwill. Um, they carry, the ones near us carry lots of clothing and books and home goods, furniture, stuff like that. So one of the big items that I purchased recently is actually a small little table which I have sitting outside. And eventually on my blog I'll show how to paint that using some chalk paint. Um, but that's not for today. That's a different day. So I pick up kind of random stuff that I you can be used for crafting. And this is just a wood and um, cork circle. It's probably a trivet or on the back it shows for like a pot or something. But cork is kind of a cool um, texture. This isn't as springy as maybe some other corks would be. But that's okay because it's kind of heat resistant and a great texture to use. The next things that I picked up are these, um, I don't know how, what you would call them, kind of like a tray that would go under paper plates. I'll probably use them for something different, I haven't quite decided, but there's two of those, and so those are pretty cheap. Uh, one of the biggest things that I get from stores, um, or secondhand stores are fashion items. So this is a really plain denim tote bag. And denim's another trend currently, but also it's very classic. I mean, denim's been around for hundreds of years, but this is pretty durable uh, tote bag. I'm probably gonna jazz it up with some paint. All right. This, I didn't know Christmas was quite a while ago, but they had stuff on sale, and if you follow my blog, you saw that my Christmas tree um, was super colorful this year, and it's like the first year and mini that we actually had a tree. So I picked this up because I thought it would be cute for next year, um, actually having a better topper than we did this year. Uh, going along with more bags, I got this cool straw clutch. Um, it has cotton lining, not really much to it, has a little closure. So I'm actually planning on using some tulip or um, writ dye to give it a new color, just kind of a new lease on life. Um, it's in pretty good condition, and that's one thing that you want to check when you're buying secondhand items, is make sure, especially straw, that you don't have any breakage. Um, this coloring could be natural, could also be from wear, so you can try cleaning a little, but you don't want to get it. Uh, super wet for long because it's not meant to hold up for that. Um, so you want to make sure it's dried and good. Um, so like I said, make sure it doesn't have cracks, a lot of discoloring, and especially the lining, you want to make sure that that's actually intact because nothing's worse than trying to fix a really bad lining. You see like some of this is loose, but that's pretty easy to sew. Um, this is really good condition. Another one that I picked up also to dye is this kind of circle shoulder purse, or I guess crossbody. Um, super long strap and kind of this sun detail on there. Now it just ties right here, um, which isn't super secure, so I might add a button and whatnot. It's kind of see-through too. So this is probably cotton, which will also dye. Has kind of a basic lining. This one actually has a nice little zipper. It's actually a J. Crew purse. And this was probably like two bucks compared to what it probably was at J. Crew, whatever season it was. Um, let's see, some wood items of what I've been buying a lot more of lately because these are really easy to update and use some paint. Um, this kind of has like a folk art feel to it. Um, I think it's kind of playing with just the black and the natural or stained brown, so I'm hoping some paint will jazz it up. And I'll probably hang it in my studio, which I'm trying to make a lot more colorful and full of folk art. Um, just kind of playing on the back, has a couple hooks still on there, so that's great that I don't have to add those. It's a pretty weighty piece, so those will be nice. 
One special thing that I picked up that's not actually for me is this wine crate. And it's natural wood. It doesn't appear to be stained or sealed or anything. It's just meant for wine. It has a nice little um, rope, or what do we call this? I don't know. It's like a ropey thing. Um, and it slides open, and I actually got these to hold my husband's magic cards, um, which is Magic the Gathering, a really popular game for lots of geeky people, including my daughter and my husband. Um, I kind of got tired of his cards being all over the house for many years. It, that happens a lot. So this fits them in there. Not quite the way that he wanted, but that'll work. And I'll likely stain this, or he said he wanted me to um, do like some wood burning on it. Some type of design that would fit with the magic cards. So I'll figure out that. That was actually only like two bucks. But it's a great investment for if you have someone that collects cards that they would play with. Um, there's a bunch of different games like that. They can hold them in there, they can carry in tournaments, which is what he wanted, was kind of this cool custom box for him. And wood is great, you can do lots of things with that. Let's see, the last couple things from Goodwill are these boxes. There's this one, which I picked up at one uh, store, and this one that I picked up a different one. They are slightly different. Um, this one is bigger than the other. And what these are, and not everyone knows this, I suppose if you're quite young you probably won't, uh, these are to actually hold eight tracks, which is a form of, um, what would we say, uh, music playing item, uh, much like a cassette, but uh, not quite as awesome as a cassette. Definitely not as awesome as updated technology. So the eight tracks would fit in these, and um, you could transport them. So it's basically like a really big case for that. So eight tracks went away many years ago. Um, I used to play when I was a kid, which doesn't really date me because they already weren't a thing anymore when I was a kid. Um, so I got those. These are made of vinyl, so I'll likely have to figure out how to treat them so that the vinyl doesn't come off or use special fabric paints. Um, these will probably hold craft supplies or something. I really like these unusual vintage boxes, almost like a vintage suitcase, um, it's like a mini vintage suitcase. So I'll probably rip out the interior and just hold that. So the next store that I have is CHKD, which stands for the Children's Hospital of the King's Daughter. It is local to Virginia, and the funds from them, I guess the proceeds go to help the Children's Hospital. Um, so that's pretty cool. They have a whole bunch of stuff. It just depends on what their donations are. So one of the things that I picked up recently was this wood, I guess like a plaque, maybe like a candle thing. But I'm going to use it for like a faux taxidermy. Something bright and colorful and kind of silly. Um, one of the other things I picked up is this vase, which is a very lovely 80s color. But it has this cool texture. And I'm going to attempt to paint this and see if I can get maybe chalk paint to adhere to this. Or maybe a metallic spray paint. I'll have to play around with it because I haven't used a lot of ceramics. Another one I picked up at the same time is this other vase and again it's ceramic and has kind of this cool geometric shape um, and clean it up and give it some paint or maybe draw some designs in here. I'm really into geometric lately and I think this will work out great. Picked up some purses. This one's actually for my daughter and I think she likes it as is. It's a crossbody bag kind of like um, almost like a hobo bag style but it goes crossbody. So that'll be great for her. She can put some art supplies or whatever she needs. She doesn't need much. She's not very old, but it has sparkles and lace and it's hot pink, which is perfect for a queen. One thing I got myself is this cool bag, which is made of oil cloth. Very rare to find it here. This was less than a dollar. So I guess it's not super popular here, but you can kind of see the design. That's, um, it's oil cloth or something similar to that. Pretty durable, waterproof. It has that design there. And then there's, let's open it up. And there's another design inside. That's cool. It has lots of room on the inside. Not any pockets in the inside, but it does have a bunch of them on the outside. 
um, or at least one big zippery one. And it appears that you can make this into like a backpack, whatever it is. But I thought this was nice, cheap, colorful, very great for carrying art supplies or whatever you need. So one of the last things that I picked up was this bag from Pierre Cardin, who was a famous um, fashion designer back in the 60s. This is probably, I don't know, around the 90s or so. Um, I couldn't get any information on the bag when I looked it up. I originally purchased this bag not really looking at the label because it didn't really say PR card did to me or any fashion designer. Um, I originally got the paint it, but I'll probably keep it the way it is. It's pretty cool. It's just uh, navy with a little blue strap to it. It could have been for anything, but he's been making stuff where at least his line has been around for a long time. Um, may not necessarily be designed by him anymore. So there is that. Now the last few things I have to show you are from various stores, including ones that I've already covered. And it's something that I've been collecting for a while to re-dye. And they are white skirts. And if you notice, this is quite large. Um, it may fit me, it may not. But it has this nice eyelet. It's a tiered skirt, which is really hard to see on the camera. But it's elastic waist and it's tiered which means it has three separate panels of fabric and you can have more than just three. Um, this one is partially lined, it's lined to here, which is fine, that covers enough. But it's white, not much to it. I think it'll be way more exciting. Dyed and I'll probably take those tiers and make them separate colors. Um, another white one, this is also tiered, but without the eyelet, it has more than three tiers. If you see it has a bunch of different small ones and big ones. This one's cotton. It has this lace here, which I'm hoping is cotton, so it will take the dye. Um, again, an elastic waist. This will probably fit as well. This one is a little short one that I got for my daughter. Um, elastic waist. It's got some tiers to it, so same type of thing. There's a lot of tiered skirts at the thrift stores because that was a popular trend a few years ago. So those are those, and at the CHKD I got this one, which is also tiered and short. Um, again, it'll probably fit, but if it didn't, I can take it in. If it's um, too big of a waist, you can add a smaller elastic and bring it in. I always look for something that has a drawstring uh, waistband or elastic waistband because I know that there's going to be more fabric than the elastic and the elastic is what needs to be cinched in. Um, if it's too bulky you can take out some of the fabric once you take the elastic out. But the reason why I'm pointing that out is you have the other case where you have a skirt. Um, this one is really cool already dyed in this neat kind of shibori design. Um, this one is from Boston Proper which is a more expensive Company is extra small. I am not an extra small, but I like the different details on here, and I can easily take these um, pyramid studs and reuse them. This was only four dollars. Now, when you have something like this that is too small, but it's a maxi skirt, you can um, drop the waist down. There's plenty of fabric, and this has some gathering in the back and a little bit of stretch. So I think this will be an interesting alteration, not super easy, because it has all these details, so I'll have to look at the construction of it. But I don't know if I've mentioned before, but my degree is in fashion. Sorry about that. Um, that's my alarm going off because I need to leave for class in a little bit. Um, 
like I, I may not have mentioned before, I actually have a degree in fashion design, so I know how to alter all that stuff to fit me and probably other people too, but most of the stuff is just for me and my daughter. Um, but I like being able to show people how to do that because it's really nice to be able to find the secondhand clothing, which is inexpensive, and a lot of people are on a budget, and give them the ability of changing it to fit their needs, whether it's shortening it or adjusting the waist or whatever that may be. So those are a few of the skirts that I picked up. Some other things is this lovely yellow dress, which is actually for my daughter. It's quite small. Um, we're hoping it fits, but it has some darts in there that I always can let out if I need to. It's super long. I'm hoping we can dye it because I don't foresee her really using this the way it is. Or we can separate the top and the bottom and just use the bottom. But it's very long, very southern. Um, kind of reminds me of like cliche southern stuff, which isn't how we dress anymore. Um, maybe when I was a kid. This is a little short skirt. These were actually purchased at a um, thrift store here that is called Diversity Thrift. And they help with LGBT organization, or they are an LGBT organization. Uh, they help with different youth um, needs. So I always like to support them and kind of spread my love around. As well as they carry different stuff than some of the other stores. They carry a lot of big furniture items, which has been great for our house. So we can get some basic stuff that we need on a budget. Um, so we've definitely been using them over the few years. Got that from them. More white skirts. This is a short one that I'll probably use really basic. Um, I might add some paint to it. I'll definitely be dyeing it because white is super see-through, but darker colors are not as see-through. This is a large, it's actually an Old Navy maternity skirt. Um, it's way too large for me. This is a great example of needing to take it in. There's not really much give to the fabric, and that means that the elastic is about the size of the fabric. It has a nice little zipper, or no, it doesn't have a zipper. I wish it did, but um, this will be easy to take it in. I'll just take out the elastic, and if it's nice elastic, I can just use that and shorten it. And this, again, has tears on it, which is nice and flowy for the summer. What else? This is the last skirt. I know it's a lot of skirts, but... I'm collecting a lot of them. This one is another tiered skirt, but this is like a kind of creamy natural color. This has an interesting knit waistband to it, which is backed by a cotton lining. So that'll be great. It's an interesting texture. Um, I think the elastic needs to be replaced and maybe some stitching too. I'm not sure the condition of it. Um, again, it's tiered. These are really common in thrift stores here. And I don't know if that's just kind of a regional thing. Um, but again, the kind of peasant prairie skirts were super popular a few years back. And as people who really just like trendy stuff go through them, they may, you know, get rid of them. But that benefits me. It comes to me. Back to the diversity thrift. I found this cute skirt, which has a neat print on it. Um, I might use fabric markers. I'll probably use dye just because that's a lot of work to use fabric markers on. But um, I like to do kind of painting with dye with this to give it a really kind of painterly look because the dye job on the black or kind of gray color is very um, not like crisp as some other ones. And this was only $3.25 or maybe less than that because they change their prices based on the day. One unexpected thing is I found this cool little case, and if you can kind of hear it, it has something inside. So I like to open this up. It actually has a whole bunch of random beads. Not a lot of them, but enough that I'll probably give them to my daughter. So that'll be a nice little case. I'll probably give it to her for crafty stuff, but it has that bead case in there and then all this extra room at the top. They have a pretty good selection of books, and this one is just junk. 
Um, new looks for old furniture, which is super handy because there's a big trend currently of updating a lot of old furniture with chalk paint and different types of paint. And that's something that I'm gonna get into with the table that I have outside and these other two chairs that I picked up several months ago at Goodwill as well. So that was kind of nice. That's probably under 10 bucks for that set, which normally it would retail like 80 um, if it was a metal kind of bistro set. Uh, at least that's what I've seen them here. So for like under 20 bucks, I'm gonna give it some new coat of paint or give it a coat of paint because I don't have any and make it a lot better. So I know this was pretty long, but I hope that you learned some stuff. Definitely go check out your local thrift stores, whether it's a big one like Goodwill that helps with uh, people with disabilities or different types of organizations. Just make sure that it kind of fits your needs as far as knowing where your money goes. Um, that's all for today, so have a wonderful crafty day.